Creating interactive headers can feel like a real challenge, but I've got a quick eye-catching solution for you today. I'll show you a draggable canvas effect inspired by Framer University, but with my own twist, of course. So grab your coffee, get comfy, and let's create this beautiful animation in Framer. So starting off with the blank canvas here, I'm switching to the Layers tab, selecting the desktop layer, and changing the fill to something darker. Let's just change the color to maybe, I'm just picking up a random dark color here. And the next step is to turn this into a stack by turning the layout on. Once that's done, we're going to create another frame inside of this, which is sticking to the top because the parent layer of a stack. We'll change the width to fill and the height to viewport 100% so it occupies the entire viewport that we have. Let's call it the main container. I'm going to again turn this into a layout and selecting the parent layer again, I'm going to change the height to fit content. Now from the naming convention itself, we'll understand the function of each stack. Let's remove the fill from the main container. I'm going to create another frame inside the main container and call it the draggable space because this is the area of the canvas that you can drag. Now, how big will this draggable space be? It's going to be really big. Let's just say 3000 pixels width and 3000 pixels height because you want to be able to drag inside the space, right? So we need this canvas to be big. And let's just give it the same fill color that we have for our parent desktop stack. Next, inside this draggable space frame, I'm going to type in the title, that is the crafted space. Let's just uh, change the color to white so it's a little more visible. And yeah, I'm just going to quickly format it by changing the size to maybe, let's just say 80 pixels. And I'm going to also change the font to Crimson Pro, which I think gives it a nice elegant feel. I'm also going to select the word crafted and change it to italic. So I think this looks nice and pretty artsy, I guess. All right, so just placing it in the corner here on the left bottom corner. And I'm not pinning it to any side or anything. I'm just going to let this be. Next, let's just add a nice navigation bar here. I'm going to use the pre-made navigations that we have from Prima. Just select the dark one from here and place it right on top. Now, if you see this is set to relative, I'm going to make that fixed. So once that's done, I'm also going to edit this navigation bar a little bit by removing the fill and changing the opacity to zero. So that's it. And this looks nice now. It looks like a complete section. Now I'm going to press F on my keyboard and I'm creating another frame here inside the draggable space again. And let's just change the fill to red so that it's a little more visible and easy to understand what we're doing here. Now we want this frame to be behind the crafted space title that we have. Now what frame this is, this is our background frame. So I'm going to pin it to all the sides. So it just occupies the entire space nicely. And I'm going to change the fill here. I don't want this to be a particular color. I want this to be an image. So I'm going to upload the image that I want to. I just wanted to add this, you know, a grid sort of an architectural sketch sort of a background here. I'm also going to change the blending mode to multiply. So once that's done, this is what the background looks like. And the space is going to be draggable. As you can see, it's inside the draggable space frame that we have. Let's just rename this to BG because this is the background. I'm going to select my draggable space, go to effects, go to drag to turn on that effect. I'm going to make it no to snap back and rest of the settings will remain as it is. And with that, this is draggable, but as you can see, I can drag outside the screen that I don't want. So let's just go back here, select the main container. What I'm going to do is, here's a quick uh, trick. So let's just set the main container and go to scroll section. Let's call it a uh, container. Once that's done, I'm going to go back to my draggable space. Now in here, we have to go to the effects again and switch the yes to no in free form. Here we have to get an option to select a section and we we'll select the container here, which will imply that we cannot drag beyond that main container that we had. So with that, we can easily fix the draggable space. Now let's just go back here. It's time for us to add the images. 
and make them draggable too eventually. Pressing F on my keyboard, I'm going to create another frame right here inside the draggable space. Now ensure it's not inside the BG layer, we want it outside. Inside of our draggable space layer. Now, now next I'm going to quickly adjust the height of this by just randomly making this bigger. If you notice that I've gone inside the BG layer again. To avoid this problem, we are going to select the BG layer and lock it. Next, let's just go back to our frame. I'm going to give it a nice corner radius of maybe 20 pixels. And let's just also update the fill. To do that, let's just go to the image, option, plugins, and unsplash. I'm not uploading any custom images. I'm just using unsplash to, to get some nice photography uh, shots. And here we have our first frame ready. Next, I'm going to just hit command D to duplicate this and keep updating the images as it is. But before that, let's just ensure it's not inside any of our frames. All the layers are separate. And I'm going to resize these. I'm going to duplicate and keep resizing it because I want to create that sort of an effect. And following the same steps, I'm quickly updating all the images. Now, once that's done, I've also added certain rotation here. Let's just ensure this one is on top. I'm going to select these all again on these uh, image frames we have. And I'm going to add a border uh, color to this, just like a slight uh, solid fill. And also like a shadow. I'm going to go with, you know, a very stark shadow. Because this is already on a dark background. And we need a stark shadow to be able to, you know, uh, elevate this properly. So that it sort of creates that 3D effect. And once that's done, I'm going to adjust the blur values and the values on X and Y axis. Next, I'm going to select all these images, going to effects, turn on drag. In here, let's just turn off the snapback property. And with that, we have added the drag effect. Now it's time for us to have a look on how this looks when we play it. So let's just do that. And this is how you can just now with the canvas also drag the images within it. This is pretty cool, right? So you can drag the canvas as well as the images. Now to make this effect a little more interesting, we're going to add a few other things. Selecting all the image layers again, we're going to go to effects and add hover. Now what this will do is, let's just go to hover first and say we want to sort of, you know, add a little bit of rotation when we hover over a card. Or we want this to slightly scale up or scale down. So I'm just going to make it 1.08 here. And I also want to rotate it by maybe 2 pixels. We can also add certain shadow here, shadow effect. When we hover over the card, we can make it offset. We can do a bunch of other things. You can do it as you like it. I'm also going to update the shadow of this and change the blow values, the values on X and Y. And uh, yeah, with that done, I'm also going to add another effect here, that is the press effect. Now what happens when you press it? So here, I'm again going to change certain values. Let's just change the scale here. I'm going to make it maybe 1.1. 1 .1. And I'm also again going to update the shadows. So once that's done, we are going to quickly view it. You'll see how now when you hover it, there's this slight rotation. And when you press it, you see that shadow value is changing. When I want this to have that rotating effect on press as well. So I'm going back to press and let's just add a rotate value of two pixels again. And now let's just view it back. So that's how easily you can create this draggable effect. It looks pretty complicated, but it's actually super easy to create. Now you can stop at this step or you can go ahead with me by selecting all the images and center aligning them. Let's ensure we position the layers right so we have the image that we want on top to be at top. And I'm setting the draggable space uh, frame here and turning that into a component. Now in here, let's just create another variant by clicking on this button right here. And in the second variant that we have, I'm going to reposition these pictures and spread it across my canvas in a very random manner. 
you can do it as you like i'm just positioning it the way i want to next let's just connect the two variants that we have on the interaction of click and we're also going to edit the transition spring here by changing the timing slightly from 0.4 let's just make it somewhere around 1.9 because i want it to be nice and smooth also changing the mouse value from 0.2 to maybe 0.1 now once that's done let's just do it so once you do that you will see clicking on this frame you will spread across the cards and you can always move it that interaction remains intact so this is how you can add that little uh, you know effect to it next i'm selecting all these images and hitting command d to duplicate it because i want more images to be spread across the canvas so that you know when the user is Drawing across the canvas, you are discovering an image every time. So that's pretty cool, right? So let's just do that. Just, just have a view at this. And you see how I'm just dragging in. I'm just finding images all across. There are multiple images. You can always update these uh, images if you want to. But I'm just going to keep them the way they are. Pretty lazy to do that. So once that's done, coming back to our main screen, let's just add another section to our page. For this, I'm again using the pre-made sections available on Prima. Just selecting a random one here, just to add that uh, page feeling, so that this looks like a header that we have created. And let's just quickly update this uh, section. I'm just going to update the colors and the font so it matches the entire theme very quickly. Now let's go back to our draggable space component and select all these images. I'm going to add another effect here called the scroll speed. Now I want the scroll speed of these to be maybe, let's just let that be 110%. That seems okay. You can change it if you want to. You can also have different for different images. And I'm also going to select the text and again, change the scroll speed to maybe 90%. Next, let's just select the background. For that, let's just unlock it first. Again, go to effects, add the scroll speed and make it um, 50%. So once we have all the scroll speeds set, let's just go back to our home page and have a view at this. So here it is, our beautiful header sections that we have created in less than 10 minutes. And why just header? You can actually use it anywhere on the page. It just adds a fun and interactive touch to your page. And when you scroll it, you will notice how there are this beautiful floating effect. And with that, we have come towards the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you do like our content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next week with another amazing tutorial. Till then, happy creating.